Hello, 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 and welcome to Tuck's Take, brought to you by PlaySugarHouse.com, the best in the business when it comes to live in-game betting. It's always quite interesting at the end of the season. Which teams still have something to play for, who's already cashed in their chips and is done, and who is still playing hard for their coach. I mean, which teams are ridiculously unpredictable and which teams can you count on? It's a confusing world we live in. Hopefully, I can help make some sense of it all. Without further ado, week 14 of the NFL season. Week 13 was far from stellar for me, but we did get one thing right. Remember I said if Green Bay loses to Arizona, Mike McCarthy will be fired? Huh? 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 How many of you looked at the schedule before the season and thought to yourself, this Green Bay Packer Atlanta Falcon game would have zero playoff implications? Go ahead, raise your hand. Stop. Put your hand down. You did not. Compared to expectations, you might not find two more disappointing teams in the NFL. And in both cases, it just seems to get worse each week. I expect Green Bay to respond to the firing of their head coach in a positive manner but I'm not sure it'll be enough to overcome this big a spread. This feels like too many points in what should be a very high scoring affair. Give me the Falcons and the over for the Tux Take Double Dipper Special of the Week. Baltimore at Arrowhead this weekend. Kansas City is 8-3-1 against the spread this year, but they've only covered once in their last five. Spencer Ware is running the ball for them now, and while that certainly hurts their explosiveness on offense, it doesn't really move the needle with regards to the line, but should it? With Lamar Jackson under center, the Ravens are winners of three in a row, two and one against the spread in those games. I think the Ravens keep this game close, ish. This line moved a ton from the open. KC opened as eight and a half point favorites and the sharp money quickly moved it down to 6.5. I suspect money comes in on Kansas City now and the line goes back to seven, which is what I want. Give me the Ravens getting a touchdown and don't be afraid to pay a little extra juice to get it if you must. Carolina has been horrific on the road this year and this week they travel to Cleveland. Baker Mayfield and the Browns are a talented bunch, but with inexperience often comes inconsistency as they laid an egg last week. Mayfield strikes me as the kind of quarterback who bounces back after a poor performance. As for Carolina, they have fallen apart. If you bet on them the past month, it's been painful. I know. The Panthers have lost four straight and are 0-4 against the spread. They're also 1-5 against the spread on the road this year. You put that into a fancy mathematical equation, and you'll see the play this week is clear. Give me the brownies. Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts face off against the Texans in Houston. I'm not going to begin to explain what happened to Indy last week. I don't understand it. Luck coming off eight straight games of at least three touchdown passes, and he throws none, and the Colts get shut out by a Jaguars team that appeared to be over it. The NFL can be unpredictable at times. Houston is now the league's hottest team as they've won nine straight. In fact, if you want to point to the turning point in the Texans' season, it might be the first time these two teams played each other. Back in week four, the Texans entered that game 0-3, and it took overtime to determine the winner. Now, if Houston loses and goes to 0-4, their season is probably over. But they won 37-34, and eight games later, they're now in contention for a playoff bye. And what I expect to be another great battle. I like Indy to end the streak they started. Give me the Colts. The New England Patriots quietly go about their business, hoping nobody notices they are still winning. And winning. And winning. Frankly, betting against the Patriots has proven to be foolhardy, and costly proposition over the past 15 years. But if there was ever a week to bet against them, it might just be this week. The Miami Dolphins have actually won four of their last five games versus the Patriots at home. And they are five and one against the spread at home this season. I like those trends. Give me the fins and the points. New Orleans was on an absolute tear until they ran into Dallas last Thursday. Who saw that coming? Yeah, me neither. How do they respond? Now, not much has changed, right? The Saints team is still incredibly hard to defend and should be able to score at will versus Tampa Bay this week. The question really is, can Jameis Winston and the Bucs offense keep up? Winston is an extremely talented, albeit streaky quarterback. Right now, he's on one of those hot streaks. New Orleans have only lost three regular season games in their past 13. Two of those losses have come at the hands of the Buccaneers. Sometimes, a team just has another team's number. 
Give me Tampa Bay and all those juicy points. The G-Men played division rival Washington this week. The Redskins actually opened as favorites, but then everyone realized Washington might have to start Mark Sanchez at quarterback. Remember butt fumble Sanchez? Or the turnover waiting to happen, as I like to call him? He has only been on the team for a couple of weeks. He barely knows the offense, and... Well, those are the only good things I can think to say about this situation. The Giants are 3-0-1 against the spread in their last four. Washington is playing on a short week. This doesn't bode well for the Redskins. Give me the New York Giants to win on the money line. The New York Jets travel to Buffalo. An intriguing matchup from a betting perspective. And only from a betting perspective. This isn't really much of a rivalry anymore as Buffalo has dominated the Jets as of late, including the 41-10 can of whoop ass they delivered in week 10. Having lost six straight and going one in five against the spread during that stretch, the New York Jets are playing as bad as anyone these days. If injured rookie quarterback Sam Darnold can make his way back to the field, that might be the shot in the arm the Jets need, but I can't in good conscience recommend you put your money on New York. For what it's worth, the Bills have covered the spread in three straight games. They'll make it four this weekend. Give me Buffalo. Until next time, I'm David Tuckman. Enjoy the games and good luck.